got all these likes. I'm famous. <laughs> I overheard a teenage girl say that to a group of her friends a few months back. A few seconds later, I heard her say to one of her friends, suddenly I don't feel so small anymore. Hearing this winded me because for a second, I imagined myself as a teenager again, measuring my worth with likes and shares and comments on people who don't know or care about me. Is this really our reality? Like, seriously? We're a society who chooses distraction over self-reflection. We're a society who chooses busyness over being present. And it's making us lonelier, unhealthier, and more afraid of being who we really are. I'm Amanda, and I'm a storytelling expert. My job is to help businesses and people learn how to tell their stories. And I love it, absolutely love it. Hands up if you've ever felt scared to tell your story. Oh, I'm so glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. Um, I'm actually really scared to be up here right now, like, honestly, like my whole body's shaking a little bit. And I have this annoying voice in my head that's like, Amanda, what are you doing up on that stage? Even though it's kind of like a stage. You don't belong there. No one cares about your story. But I know that's just fear talking, it's cool. Now, put your hand up if you feel like you don't know your story or know how to tell it. I can't see at the back at all, but I'm thinking there's people with their hands up, which is yeah. good. Otherwise, I'm going off the stage. Um, cool, you're not alone, and that's why I'm here. Here's the thing. We've technically never been so connected. We can get in touch with each other in seconds. We can research anything we want in seconds. But we've also never been so disconnected from ourselves. Are you exhausted with social media right now? Because uh, I'm so exhausted with social media. I'm exhausted with all the content that makes me feel like I'm failing at life. When I see people posting about their morning routines, getting up at 5 a.m., going for a run, having an ice bath, <laughs> eating a really nice smoothie, um, let me think. Oh, breath work, um, meditation. Oh my gosh, I'm like, is this really what I've got to be doing to be seen as successful and feel successful? Nah, not me. I'm in my pajamas most days till three. No, I'm kidding, until about 11 o'clock. Um, <laughs> I'm also exhausted with all of the content that feels perfect and polished. Like, oh, let's talk about reels. Reels, like reels on Instagram, right? I don't know how people find the time to do these reels with like the fonts like popping up and like the transitions and then the music and then the, and then coming up with a caption, like what? I went on a really amazing Hindu last year for my, with all my girls in Ibiza and I was so pumped to like share all of like the story about it when I got back. It took me four hours to create the reel. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely got better things to do with my time. Four and then I didn't share it because I couldn't come up with a cool caption. And I couldn't find, and I couldn't find the music that looked really good, like all of the videos and stuff. Anyway, um, I'm also exhausted with all the content that takes me down rabbit holes and to places that I really shouldn't be because actually I should be spending some quality time with my husband or my friends, who are also here today, and, or my mum, or, or going to spend time with my nan. Do you know what I mean? She's not going to be here forever. Um, but I end up just like scrolling sometimes minusly and at the moment my obsession is with dancing pandas and they're just like, you know, who knew pandas could dance, man? Um, so, but going back to, going, I got my off script for a little bit then. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm craving realness. I'm craving those real and raw stories that go in on what it means to be a human being, you know? Um, I shared something pretty personal on LinkedIn not so long ago, about why I was scared about having children one day. Because I didn't feel like I could build a, su a successful business and raise a child and be a good mum. And do you know what happened when I did that? I started receiving stories from people in the comments about how they did both successfully, about how they built their businesses and about how they raised their children. It made me feel encouraged. It made me feel inspired. It made me believe that that could be my story too. When I read their stories, I felt, it felt like true connection. And isn't that what it's about? True connection? Not these meaningless likes and soulless comments from people who don't know us that we all crave every single day. That seems bonkers to me. It's about the stories. It's about the stories that we tell. 
All right, telling our story is a practice and a lifelong commitment, I've learned that. But it's really scary to do as well because fear, fear, loves to show up and hold us back from speaking our truth. Some people call it imposter syndrome. I hate that word. Those two words, I hate it. Some people call it perfectionism. Some people call it ego. Oh, honestly, we're overcomplicating it, man. It's just fear. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being wanted. And fear of not being successful. Or if you really want to simplify it, fear of not belonging. So we show up in ways that aren't a true reflection of who we are. We pretend our lives are amazing with all these cool pictures on Instagram and stuff on holidays and beaches and whatever. We hide our feelings and power through. We distract ourselves by doing more. What? And all this is actually doing is pushing us further away from ourselves and each other. I've realized, and I'm learning, that the only way to overcome fear is to confront it and, in a way, kind of make friends with it. Oh no, hear me out. I did that with a letter. Hopefully it's in my pocket. Here it is. This is the letter <coughs> that I wrote to fear. <coughs> fear, we need to have a chat, man. We need to have a chat. What's your problem? What's your beef with me? <laughs> Why do you always feel the need to show up when I want to show up and be real with people? All I want to do is tell my story. All I want to do is show the real me and talk about What's real for me? Why do you keep blocking my courage to be vulnerable? Why do you keep denying true connection for me and the people that matter to me? You stopped me telling my story to my family when I was struggling to pay my bills and get my business off the ground. You stopped me telling my story about my dreams and goals to people because I failed to reach so many of them. You stopped me telling my story to my husband when I wasn't ready to have children yet. Why, for what? I don't get it, I don't get you, and I don't get this obsession you have with me speaking my truth. I mean, I know you exist to protect me and stop me from doing things that might kill me, I get it. But seriously, come on. All I wanna do is tell my story. All, all I wanna do is show what's real. I'm not putting my life at risk, I'm not gonna die. I just want some space to do my thing and say my thing. That's where I'm at. Now tell me, where are you at? Why do you keep standing in the way of me telling my story? And this is the letter I got back from Fear. <laughs> Might link a little bit of water in a minute. Oh, my mouth's dry. <clears throat> All right, let me do another voice. <clears throat> hey, Amanda. <laughs> Thanks for writing. Listen, I don't want beef. I'm vegan. <laughs> Look, real talk, I don't mean to stop you from showing up and saying your thing. I'm just scared. You're gonna get judged by people, and that's a heavy feeling. Judgment hurts, and I feel like it's my job to protect you and your identity. I guess that's why I stand in your way. To me, it feels safer to stop you from speaking your truth. It means people won't have a chance to reject you. It means you won't feel hurt if people don't believe you. It means you won't get bombarded with opinions that go against your beliefs. It means you won't get those side eyes and eye rolls that make you feel uncomfortable. So there it is, that's where I'm at. That's my truth, your overprotective friend. By the way, that's just who I am, fear. <laughs> understanding, understanding why fear shows up is a game changer. Honestly, it's a serious game changer. Me and fear, I feel like we understand each other now. I feel like we're on a, on a good level. And I've realized that telling my story is on me. It's up to me to choose how I want to show up. So do I deny true connection for me and other people? Or do I try to avoid feeling judged by hiding who I really am? I always have a choice, and so do you. One of my most favorite things to do in the world is spend quality time with my mum. When I'm with her, I feel like I'm just be me, I love getting to know her and asking her questions about what her life was like growing up and all of that kind of good stuff. When we were out for a walk once, I shared something pretty deep with her. I told her that one of my biggest fears is dying without ever really knowing who I am and the people that I love and care about not really knowing who I am either. And a bit later that day, we sat down, we had a bit of cake and some tea and that. 
She was like, Mando, I've been thinking about what you said earlier. I thought, yeah. I don't think I've ever really known who I am. I have a big, big feeling she isn't alone. As our lives get busier, with more demands and more distractions, the more we forget who we are. In 2021, I forgot who I was. And it wasn't the first time, this, this happened many times. I was a year into running my third business, because the other ones failed. And I had one of those, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going moments? I know you've all had one of those too. If you're not, if you haven't, it's, it's probably coming. Um, <laughs> so I went on a eat, pray, find a matter trip to Portugal for 18 days, inspired by one of my favorite books by Elizabeth Gilbert, Eat, Pray, Love. Definitely recommend reading it, or the film, the film's good. Um, the food wasn't that great. Honestly, it was awful. And I, and I didn't really pray, to be honest. It's not really my thing. Um, but I did find myself again because I created the space that I needed to get to know myself. When do we ever do that? Hear myself and listen to my story. I believe being true to who we are is a revolutionary act, but let's be honest, where do we start with that? How can we be true to ourselves in a world that's designed to disconnect us, demand us, and distract us from ourselves? How? I think I have the answer, though. It starts with connecting back to our story. Because when we're connected to our story, that's when we can truly, truly start belonging. To connect with our story, we need to connect with our origin, empathy, purpose, product, and vision stories. These are the five stories we all have to tell. Do you want to go and meet them? Let's go. I've got some back here. I'm kidding. Um, so the first story, our first story, is the origin story. This story will connect us back to where we started, the journey we've been on, and the lived experiences that have shaped our beliefs. It will help us to remember what we've been through, what we've overcome, what we've learned, what we've achieved, and how we've become this incredible version of who we are today. When we tell our origin story, we'll take people on a journey through our life. We'll talk about the things we experienced growing up. We'll talk about the people who inspired us. We'll talk about the moments that changed us. Our origin, origin story is a really powerful story for us to tell because it's so unique to all of us. It's a story that only we can tell. Our second story is our empathy story. This story will connect us back to how we're feeling and why we're feeling that way. It will help us to remember that our feelings are valid and need attention. When we tell our empathy story, we'll pull out a chair for people to sit down with us and listen. We'll help people to see, hear, and feel themselves in our story and feel less alone. Our empathy story is a really hard one to tell because, let's be honest, showing up and being vulnerable is scary as hell. But when we do, it's magic. Because hearing someone's vulnerability is how we end up feeling connected. Our third story is our purpose story. This story will connect us back to what matters to us most and what we stand for. It will help us to remember why we're here and why we matter. Purpose stories come in all different shapes and sizes. 70-year-old Tony's purpose was to bring joy to people's lives by reciting poems to them as they waited for the train in the morning. Founder of the Me Too movement, Tarana Burke's purpose is to change the way the world thinks and talks about sexual violence. I see my purpose as my assignment. It's something I was born to do. It's my calling. My purpose is to show everyone in the world how to tell their story because it will change their life. Our fourth story is our product story. This story will connect us back to our incredible gifts and talents and how we serve others. It will help us to remember that we are doing something that is making a difference. My mum teaches people to drive, and she also takes care of my nan, who's struggling to take care of herself at the moment. My mum is changing lives, and I bet in some way you all are too. When I tell my product story, I feel connected to the meaning behind the work that I do, which is to remind people that telling their story has never been more important. And last but not least, 
Our fifth story is our vision story. This story will connect us back to where we're going and what we're working towards. It will help us to remember why our choices and actions matter. When, I tell, when we tell our vision story, we will give people an invitation to believe our dreams into existence with us. We'll talk about the future we want to be a part of. We'll inspire people to dream and expand their dreams. Our vision is our destination. My vision is for everyone to experience the power of telling their story. Together, our origin, empathy, purpose, product, and vision stories, your five stories, will give us a map back to who we are and why we belong here. Imagine what the world would be like if more people knew their story and had the courage to tell it more. I believe it's our collective duty to tell our stories. I believe telling our story is an act of bravery. I believe telling our story is one of the kindest things we can all do for each other. When I share my experiences of grief, pain and struggle, I give people permission to do the same. I make them feel less alone and less afraid. I, I create a brave space for them to show up and feel comfortable sharing their story because they felt themselves in mine. It's taken me a really long time to realize that telling my story isn't about me. It's way bigger than me and you and all of us. It's about everybody participating in the global narrative of what it means to be a human being. When we do the work to connect with our story, understand it and practice telling it, we give each other a greater sense of belonging. We give each other an invitation to show ourselves be ourselves, and feel like ourselves. Your story is your greatest gift. For you, for me, and now for this little one inside my belly. <laughs> and for all of us, and for all of us, it really is time to start telling it. Our future depends on it. Thank you.